Hey everybody, this is Jim Prusak, physical therapist and owner of The Pain PT. And today I want to talk to you about the four components of healing chronic pain. And these are the four areas that we work with, with patients in chronic pain and how we use our brain and nervous system approach. So I just want to describe a little bit today, um, a little bit about each of these categories here, because each of them are important in its own right in the recovery process of chronic pain. So we'll get started, we'll, we'll talk about the physical symptoms. This is the reason why people seek treatment. They actually feel something in their bodies, they feel pain. And when pain becomes chronic, it really takes on a level of its own. It can start out as some of these uh, descriptions you see here on the page, and then it really it seeps in deeper. It starts affecting other areas of our thinking, our feeling and emotions, and our behaviors. Those are the other three components we'll speak about. So the physical symptoms being at the top of the list, we need to learn how to reframe these symptoms in our body. Remember, chronic pain symptoms are not the same as acute pain symptoms. Acute pain symptoms are something we should listen to, something that we should heed warning to and not continue to do certain activities or behaviors that might injure ourselves more. But when we talk about chronic pain, as you've learned in watching my chronic versus acute pain video, we, we cannot trust the symptoms when they're chronic because a lot of times they're not messages from physical damage anymore, but they're messages from the brain and nervous system. So it's like a false alarm, it's sort of like a smoke alarm going off without a fire. So we need to reframe our physical symptoms as being something that's indicating damage or danger to something that's actually okay and just sort of a misfiring of our brain and nervous system. We need to look at our physical symptoms in a new way. And we go over that here at the Pain PT. So the second category, and this all results from these initial physical symptoms, are our thoughts and our beliefs. What is our thinking around pain? What runs through our mind when we, when we think about our pain, when we associate with our pain? What runs through our mind? What thoughts pop up? A lot of times negative thinking takes over, and especially with chronic pain. And we know negative thinking has a big impact on pain, and research shows that. So we need to look at our thoughts and our beliefs. This is really important because this drives the cycle of our feelings and our behaviors and perpetuates chronic pain. So changing our thoughts, changing our beliefs from something negative to something that's positive is a great first step in changing the cycle of chronic pain. The third piece of the program is looking at the emotions and feelings. And this is a, a piece that's missed a lot because we, we talk a lot about thoughts and stuff in cognitive behavioral therapy, but we don't always include the emotions and the feelings. And we know pain is uh, a, not only a sensory, but it's an emotional experience. That's the definition of pain. And we know from the science that the emotional centers of the brain are affected in chronic pain. So we need to look at our emotions. They're part and parcel of the pain, the frustration, the anger, the irritation, the fears, the anxiety, the grief, the hopelessness, the guilt, the shame, everything that runs with pain is part of the pain itself. Emotions are actually part of the pain itself. How are we dealing with our emotions? How are we dealing with our feelings and related to pain? This is really important. And it's one of the things that we address at the pain PT and is critical to the recovery of chronic pain. All feelings are meant to be felt. All feelings are meant to be felt. So if we're actually blocking our feelings, running away from them, trying to stop them or change them, we're actually not helping ourselves. We're actually making the pain worse. So we'll talk more about this later in one of the other YouTube videos on emotions. Each of these categories will be broken down into its own little video so you can learn a little bit more. So this last category, the fourth category, are our behaviors and actions. This is what we're actually doing in response to the pain. As they say, your actions speak louder than your words. So when you are actually being driven by your pain, you're stopping certain behaviors, or you're stopping activities, hobbies, things to do with friends and families, exercise, anything that you're avoiding 
because of the pain is sending a really strong message into your body from your brain and nervous system that things are not okay, that there's something wrong, there's something dangerous, something threatening happening. This happens on a subconscious level. So every time we avoid activities, every time we shy away from doing something because of our pain, we're actually reinforcing the pain itself. There's a term in science called fear avoidance, where the fear causes us to avoid certain activities. Fear is one of the emotions associated with pain, and avoidance is one of the behaviors or actions we see with pain. So we need to actually overcome our fear by getting back to doing the very things we have a hard time doing. This is very helpful in, in getting past that pain process and getting out of that pain cycle. So in summary, when trying to break the pain cycle, we have to look at these categories here. Chronic pain itself is made up of the physical symptoms. And from that come negative thinking, negative thoughts, which create upset feelings or negative feelings in the body, which then create unhelpful behaviors and actions. And this is the cycle and the circle that continues if it's not interrupted. So we need to look at all these categories here and address each and every one of them on the road to recovery. Hope you enjoyed it. Everybody have a wonderful day. If you have any questions, you can see my contact information below. Talk to you soon.